Hello, my friends. I forget that this this new format is where I'm like so just, whoa. I feel like I'm up too high. Like I'm looking. Whoa. Excuse me for shaking you. Is that better? Oh, what is happening? It's a little bit better. It's not quite as like, let me hug you. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Welcome to the weekly What's Up and Makeup chat. I am so happy to be here with you. Uh, oh my goodness, everybody just flooding in. Hello, everybody. Uh, the way that this is working now is there's no pre-notification. It's just when I go live, everybody's notified, and there's already 134 people here in the first 49 seconds. That is so cool. Um, but yeah, so today I figured we would just do like an ask me, ask me anything QA. We haven't done one of these in a little while, and I thought it would be fun to just hang out and just talk about makeup and just let you all just kind of go nuts and ask questions. You can ask questions of the community, you can ask questions of me, uh, whatever you want to do. I did want to show you, I was trying to get it up today. I don't think it's going to happen. Plus, three videos on the channel one day might be a, a little bit much. I did. I was not expecting it. I did get the nudie patootie palette from Laura Lee. She did send it to me. I did order it. It's coming on Monday, uh, but she did send it to me. So I spent most of the day today. Uh, my family was kind of running errands and doing things. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try to get this video up because everybody's going to be getting theirs on Monday. I did a first impression with swatches and then there's going to be a full review like my normal style later on on the channel after I've had time because, you know, I'm still working on the KKW Mario palette. And by now, everybody's forgotten about it. That's the worst thing about being thorough in an environment where everybody's okay with first impressions. You know what I mean? So it's like, by the time I get it up, I know there's a core part of my audience that is really going to still love the KKW Mario video. But it's like, it's been out for like a month at this point. Uh, because I just had a bunch of other videos I wanted that I kind of already had in queue. And I was testing it. And I'm technically ready to review. But I have my monthly favorites coming up this week. And also BoxyCharm coming up this week that need to be up before the end of the month. So that's the way it goes. So that's why I wanted to do like a first impression on this. Because I know there's a lot of questions about what it looks like in person versus the website on Laura Lee. Los Angeles, as well as the video that she filmed. So I'll just kind of give you a quick shot of how it's looking under these lights. It, it very much is very difficult to photograph. I will give her that. It is difficult to get those true colors. I do have some pictures that I uh, tuned specifically on my Instagram and just Jen Loves Reviews over there, or you can find them on Twitter if you're curious about. Um, I, I made sure, like, I held the, the, the palette up to my computer and, like, went like this and like tried to match it to make sure that it was exactly the same. So it's as close as I could get it. And then the swatches that you're gonna see tomorrow morning are going to be the same way. So I'm really excited for you to see that because I wanted to try to help you clarify some of those misconceptions because I feel like that's something that's going to either make people want to um, to to buy it or not because the two pictures did look quite different. So uh, it is going to be a little bit short of a video, but I do think it's going to be very informative. Well, it's short in that it's 20 minutes and not 30. <laughs> And it's not going to be fully tested uh, because I can't get a video out that fast fully tested. It's just not possible. So uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I did want to show you that first. And now I'm just going to go ahead and say hello very quickly to the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness. Also known as the people who are here in live chat. And if you're watching this on the replay, you are also part of the collective brain. You're going to participate by uh, making comments down below. And believe it or not, every single comment that you leave is makes me look cool in the YouTube algorithm. So if you want to leave, uh, like as you're watching this for the hour. If you want to just leave comments every single time you think of something and leave a bunch of comments, that's totally cool with me because it makes me look like you're more engaged. So what, however many comments you want to leave, totally cool. And I will read them. So uh, let me go ahead and say hello to Megan, who is one of our fabulous reporters. She's also a Facebook moderator. She is amazing. Hello to Megan. My friend Nancy is here. Hello to you, Nancy. Mwah. Caroline is here. And coffee and makeup, please. Banshee Muse back in the house. Karen is back in the house. Joanne and Prayer Lights and Amy and Debbie Green and McKenna and Monica and Mariah and Consuelo and everybody else. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. So let's go ahead and get into some comments and questions from the community and let's see what we're going to chat about. You never know what's going to happen in this conversation. Uh, this is a really good one to listen to kind of like a podcast while you're doing other things too because it won't probably won't be showing too much on the screen. Natalie says, haven't watched your collab with Emily but can't 
wait to. Oh my gosh, the, the experience of going to go visit Emily Noel 83 was a serious dream come true. Like I'm, I still can't believe that it happened. I'm still trying to digest that because this is, it's a huge, huge deal for me to have been able to go out there and spend time with her. And she is amazing. She's absolutely amazing. So I'm so thankful. And the video that's over on her channel is really, really good. It's a very not traditional anti-haul uh, where, you know, we kind of talk about something that's coming out of something we don't plan to buy. And then we kind of talk to each other about it. And in some instances, we almost convince each other that maybe we do want it. <laughs> <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, it, it's very different for an anti-haul. So if you don't usually dig anti-hauls, definitely rec recommend you check over at uh, Emily's channel and check that one out because it's definitely different. It's probably one of the most positive anti-hauls <laughs> I have ever seen or done. Uh, let's see. Amanda says your Emily Noel video reminded me of beauty news. I wish more channels did this type of format. Yes. And if I had another person, I think beauty news came up with a great idea to be able to have two people discussing these things. If I had someone that I could bring on all the time, they're very lucky to have each other. Uh, I definitely, I think it's a great format. I definitely do. Uh, hello in Paris. And uh, Monica, I love the collab. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Marjestic says, what's your favorite shade to do a monochromatic look? You know what I really love is the Dose of Colors Mauves palette. Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. If you've never tried the Dose of Colors eyeshadow palettes, they are all are monochromatic and they are so buttery and creamy and easy to blend and easy to work with. And they've got a really nice gradient from light to deep. So it's really easy to get that beautiful monochromatic look. So that is by far my favorite favorite palette to use for a monochromatic look. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Rebecca says, I'm so fed up with the word nude. Um, I'm going to record a video on it on my channel. You know what? I, I don't see, for me, I don't have any problem with the word nude. And with Nudie Patootie specifically, she's using nude for light, medium, and deep shades. And that's where I have an issue is when it's only used for light shades. That's when I have an issue. Uh, like we were saying in What's Up in Makeup today, uh, the, the owner of Beauty Bakery, how she was saying, you know, in some ways that, that women of color are seen as second, you know, they're like an afterthought, a second, and it's just not right. It's so messed up. So it's nice to see nude shades in different tones, in light, medium, and deep uh, tones, you know? Respect the nudeness, you know? But Urban Decay sure did start something with that nude stuff. I, I mean, at least with, for me, that's the first nude makeup that I, uh, I came in contact with. Garrett. Hello, Garrett. What is your all-time favorite makeup brand for drugstore? Hmm. Drugstore priced? Drugstore? I would probably have to say NYX has the most hits for me, but they do have a lot of misses for me as well. Uh, I feel like L'Oreal has some a lot of really good hits for me, but also some misses as well. I don't think there's, there's well, I don't know. Are there any brands that have everything that I like? There's not a single, there's always things I don't like from different brands, but if I had to pick, I would say either NYX or L'Oreal. Probably NYX is more consistent for me. Kristen, I want to, oh no, it went down. Darn, ugh, I hate when that happens. Rebecca, are you the same color nude as the next person? My dad is seven times darker than me and the color nude would not be the same for both of us. Exactly, exactly. Steph says, oh, Steph. Hi, Steph. Would love to see a nudie patootie on darker skin. Me too. Looks like it'll pull chalky um, on anything other than fair. And one thing here to note, and this I mentioned in the video tomorrow, is that this whole top row is very light. And then you get into some mid-tone shades here in these four. And these two are actually quite dark. I feel like they look darker uh, in the swatches that you'll see tomorrow. Um, they definitely are much darker than the ones that, that the way they appeared on Laura's channel, in my opinion. FBH16, what product that has been your favorite from a YouTuber product collab? Hmm. You know, Honestly, if I if I want to be completely 100% honest, my favorite product from collabs, I, I think there's a tie. And they're both people that I know can be very controversial, but we're talking about products, not people. This is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, cast it aside because this is a channel of positivity. You can tell I've been watching Nady from Pop Lux. <laughs> I don't think I got it exactly right, but that was close. Um, this is a channel of positive energy, okay? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Um, but anyway, I, I would probably say the Jaclyn Home Morphe palette and the Manny MUA Ofra Liquid Lipstick collab. 
were definitely my favorites. I think the camera just moved. Let me see if I can straighten you a little bit. There we go. It's on a very weird surface. Those probably would be my favorites. All right, it skipped down again. Uh, uh, Renee, what are your thoughts about colored rain and makeup people going to Target and are they considered drugstore now? They're going to have to be considered drugstore because they're sold at the drugstore. I think that they're redefining what drugstore means. And I think that's kind of crazy, you know, to, to redefine that price point. I don't think that it's out of line to think that a drugstore customer might purchase colored rain or, um, well, Makeup Geek has always been on the edge of drugstore prices. I mean, if you think about Physicians Formula, their prices are a little bit more than the typical drugstore. I mean, I know there's lots of sales usually on Physicians Formula, but I feel like Makeup Geek can compete with drugstore pricing. Colored rain, on the other hand, I mean, we're talking $50 palettes, $20 lip, uh, liquid lipsticks, things like that. They're definitely more of a Sephora type brand as far as pricing goes. Uh, I guess they're going to, I, I don't know what, I don't know what we're going to do because they're throwing us for a loop there, aren't us, aren't they? <laughs> they really are. They're throwing us for a loop with that. I, I'm a little confused on what we're going to have to do. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's just kind of crazy. It's really crazy. So I guess, but I don't know how Color Rain's going to do, you know, because typically the drugstore consumer is looking for something that is less expensive than $50. And if they don't know Colored Rain, I mean, you think about when someone goes into Target, the typical Target customer probably doesn't watch YouTube videos for makeup. You know, they walk down the aisle, they kind of glance around, they look and see what they might want. You know, they need new mascara. They look at which one has the nicest packaging. They put it in their cart. You know, maybe look at the images on the on the thing. I mean, they're not going to know how amazing Colored Rain is. So I don't know. I don't know. And chances are, I would imagine they're not going to have like a place you can touch them because if Oh, those eyeshadows are so good. I am very happy for them. I hope that it goes well for all of those brands. Natalie, I love trying makeup. Just uh, just wish I had unlimited money storage space. I know, right? Totally with you. Okay, City of the Silent. You talked a bit about Sephora's treatment of brands. I've heard similar things as to why other brands left, but they killed OCC. It seems that they did. And if you remember, I'm trying to remember what his name is. Uh, the man that he's a makeup artist and he's super, super famous. And last time I tried to remember his name, I couldn't. Kevin James Bennett. There we go. It came to me. Uh, he had said in a post on his Instagram when OCC went under, there was a, I, we put the image up because it was a really interesting image of a gravestone that had the OCC logo on it. And he basically in that, I don't want to misquote him, but on his page, he, he blamed Sephora for that. Uh, that it was Sephora's fault. So now we have a little more clarity as far as what um, what that was and what could have happened to them. And it seems very likely that uh, it did drive them under and it, it makes sense. It's just, it really stinks because it sounds like they just didn't follow all the way through on some of the thing, the legal aspects in the beginning. And then when it didn't sell well, which it's, I don't remember ever seeing Sephora really promote OCC. So I don't know if that kind of assisted with that, that Sephora wasn't pushing them. So I don't know. I mean, I know I didn't buy anything from OCC at Sephora ever. And I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. And actually I tried last year, I felt re fell in love with their, uh, the liquid lipsticks. So I'm really sad to see that Dash is one of my favorite shades of all time. So really sad, but it's just one of those things. I mean, these big corporations, a lot of them do not care about the little guy. They just want their bottom line. And if the little guy can bring them up, fine. But if the little guy falls, oh, well, you know, it's, it's pretty sad. All right, FBA. Oh, another FBH 16, the same person again. <laughs> um, it's good. Makeup Peak is going to be a drugstore since most drugstore brand palettes don't have the best eyeshadow palettes, but the Manny Clad palette, for example, is not a drugstore price. Oh, okay, I see. I did not purchase that, so I'm, I don't know about that one, but that makes sense. Debbie, uh, oh, Debbie. Hi, Debbie Green. She says, do you think Terrace Teeter is keeping the bad makeup for free publicity? Never heard of them before you report on this. No, I don't. I think that they just don't. I have a feeling they just don't know. I think that we tagged them on Twitter a couple of times. I think we tagged them on Twitter uh, and they just haven't done anything about it. We have a Harris Teeter not far from us. I think it's just an East Coast thing. It may just, I don't know how, what locations Harris Teeters are in, but I don't, I don't think so. I don't think they even know about the show, to be honest. I think that people that have Harris Teeters go to them. It's like, you know, Publix, we don't have a Publix, but people that have Publix go to Publix. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. That's just my opinion. 
a lot of people are saying they've never heard of OCC. Sherry says she's never heard of OCC. Um, oh, here we go. Alice says, pet peeve on beauty skincare products is dermato dermatologist tested. Unless, did a dermatologist hate it? <laughs> Love it? What did the dermatologist say after they tested it? So true, so true. Uh, in order to say dermatologist tested, all they have to do is have a dermatologist test it. And it's dermatologist tested. <laughs> Wee! Just throw those terms out there. <laughs> uh, dermatologist approved. How many? One? Two? What do the other 10 say? Did eight of them hate it and two of them love it? Oh, it's dermatologist approved because two of them liked it. Yeah, it, it is. It's marketing. It's all marketing. It's all scam marketing. Uh, Rebecca wants to know, is there a way to contact the brands and tell them about Harris Teeter? Yeah, probably. Uh, that's definitely something we can look into doing. Honestly, I just have it. And and I want to tell you uh, also, something that's important about What's Up In Makeup is that I don't write the script for What's Up In Makeup. I don't find the Harris Teeter. I didn't do the jingle. I don't, I, I all I do for What's Up In Makeup is I film it. I film it. I edit it. I approve everything that goes in, of course. Um, and that's all I do with it as I film it and edit it. It's, uh, the information is gathered by the reporters. It's put together by Tabitha, all the jokes that are in there. I would say 95% of the jokes are Tabitha's jokes. They're not my jokes. Uh, I just say them. And, you know, I think that's important for, for viewers to know. Uh, I definitely approve them, but, but it's a team effort. It, that what's up in makeup is the only, well, one of the only things on my channel that is, it, it's really a team effort. It's not just me because I couldn't do this by myself. It's way too much for a production. I mean, there's so much behind the scenes. I was telling Emily a little bit about what's up in makeup and, you know, how much goes in behind the scenes. She was like, wow. She's like, you could do like a whole documentary on the behind scenes of what's up in makeup. I was like, I don't know who would watch it, but we could, we could, because it's a lot, a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And I have tapped with a thank for a lot of that. Uh, because she does, she does a lot of good things uh, for the show and helps kind of hold. Like, she's like the glue that holds everything together and and keeps things going smoothly. I could probably do it by myself, but it wouldn't be what you see. It would be probably five or six top news items, uh, which might include some new releases. Maybe an eight to ten minute show every week. Uh, it wouldn't be what it is now without the team. There's no way I couldn't do it. It's not possible. It's 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 so much work. So you have to split it up between a bunch of people or else it's just, just couldn't do it. So yeah, so as far as like reaching out to Harris Teeter and the Harris Teeter story, that's actually not my story. That's one of our reporters' stories. So I'll talk to her and what maybe we'll work together on trying to reach out to like Revlon and, and those companies, especially Revlon with the Harris Teeter and try to get them to do something about it because we don't want anybody to get sick. I would rather the story not ever exist and have people have all of these makeup products off the shelves, you know? Even though I do like the Harris Teeter segment and I do like the, the you know, kind of outing these, these places that have these terrible products that are so old on the shelves, um, it's better for people to be safe, you know. Clara says it's a lot of work just to post a 10 minute video. That is very true. That is very true. Stevie, Stevie's girl. Hello, hello. I know you have another name and I it's out of my head right now. I know that it exists though and I know I knew it at some point. I think I knew it at some point. I have mature under eyes so makeup revol re revolutions conceal and define is less drying on me than shape tape. I really like the makeup revolution concealer. I um, I did purchase that one. I also purchased the ColourPop and I'm enjoying both of them very much. I've used the makeup revolution one more than the ColourPop but I've enjoyed them and they're over there. I would get them and tell you the shades that I got but they're over there. If I remember, I'll put them in the video description. Cindy wants to know if I've tried the hourglass stick foundation I did and I was not the biggest fan of it uh, I, I found that it caked around my nose and I just didn't like the finish of it just not my not my favorite Nikki Murphy is here hello to Nikki Murphy I moved you again sorry about that I hear the pitter patter of little feet outside my door uh, makeup Makeup or breakup blog, Shayla and ColourPop collaboration, care to comment. I think it looks gorgeous. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Love it. It looks great. I haven't, I haven't tried it or anything yet, though. Kaylee wants to know if I'm a doctor. No. 
Uh, my degrees are in education, most of them. I have uh, four degrees, actually. I have my first degree is in mental health. I got an associate's degree in that. And then my next degree was in special education with a certification in general education. And then my next degree was in psychology. And then my next degree, also undergrad, and my next degree was in elementary reading. Yeah, elementary reading, basically. Um, I was going to try to be a reading specialist before I quit teaching. But, um, but yeah, well, I took a lot of research courses and stuff. So that's where I kind of get my research background because when I was, a, when I, I got a double major in psychology. So for education and psychology, you both have, you have to be well-versed in research. And I really like that part. I actually thought about going into educational research at one point. That was one of my possible career paths. I also was thinking about going into uh, educational psychology where you would do like testing and data analysis and stuff like that. That was another possible career path for me. So going into like the ingredient analysis and all that and being really analytical with my makeup reviews is where I naturally fell after I didn't take those paths. I've always wanted, I've always loved research and, um, you know, but I'm not a doctor I did get a really cool skincare book, though, from my friend Nancy that's here. I'll have to show you at some point. It's really cool. It's like the skin flip book, and it tells you all about the skin. So next time I do a skincare review, I'll have to show you my really cool flip book that Nancy got for me. I'm excited about it. Uh, Kimberly Rose. Beauty with Kimberly Rose. Jen is amazing. I found so many great channels from Jen. That's how I found Nikki Murphy. Yay! <laughs> Uh, Rebecca, I have blue, purple, black under eye circles. I have a very hard time trying to cover them. Do you have any suggestions on what to use to cover them? I've tried peach, salmon, red, pink, and yellow. I would think salmon would work for you. If salmon doesn't work for you? That would be my suggestion. That, that would be what I would have said with salmon. Is it just not enough coverage? Have you tried the Eve Pearl Salmon Concealer? That one is really, 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 really good. Um, but I don't have super, super dark um, purple, black under eye circles. I don't know where, where you would be able to try that, though. I don't think they sell those like in department stores and stuff. So I don't know if you could try that before you bought it, what their return policy is and stuff. But that would be the one would be the salmon concealer from Eve Pearl because it's super full coverage, but it's not like cakey full coverage, at least from my excuse me, from my memory. I bought it about two years ago. I don't have it anymore. Maybe three years ago. Uh, Kennedy's going to school to be a secondary English teacher. Best of luck to you. I hope it goes well for you. Um, Hanny says, did you learn a lot off of Emily? Yes. Um, I don't know if I, well, I don't know if I learned a lot. I loved watching her do her makeup in person. It's amazing how she gets those colors to go together. It just blows me away. She's so talented with makeup. Um, I did ask her about what's up in makeup. I did ask her, I said, you know, do you have any advice being a former newscaster? She asked me, you know, if I had a news background, I told her no. She's like, I can't believe you don't have a news background. I was like, no, I don't. But, um, and that I took that as a huge compliment. I was kind of freaking out. Like, oh, but she said um, the biggest thing is to keeping your tone, trying to keep it as conversational as possible, which is extremely challenging to keep your tone uh, when you're reading something like that to be conversational because it's not a conversational thing to say. You know, if you think about the words that I'm saying, they're not something you would say to somebody in a conversation. So to try to keep that natural is really difficult. So that was kind of her biggest suggestion was to try to make sure I'm really focusing on that tone. And I hopefully in the past couple of weeks, you've noticed uh, my efforts in that trying to keep that tone a little more lighthearted and conversational. Arwen says, OMG, Jen and Kimberly Clark collab. I would love that. And actually, I tried to work that out at one point, believe it or not, about a year ago. And uh, she was in New York. And I told her, I said, if you're in New York and you have time, let me know. I will come up. I will meet you. And then she was kind of like, well, I don't really have my stuff when I'm in New York. So I was like, well, I will come down to Florida at some point. I don't care. I want to collab with you. This was, you know, like a year ago, something like that. And then she got really busy and now she's on tour. So that would definitely be something I would love to do in the future. I would love to collab with Kimberly. I think she's amazing, but she's, uh, you know, she's busy right now. She's doing her own thing and I'm very proud of her. I'm very excited for her. I hope she comes back next year too, Ke Kelly. I do. Um, Missy says, any thoughts on the repackaging ordeal? If you don't know about the repackaging ordeal that I believe Missy is speaking about, it's about when a brand uses a packaging that was meant for something else, whether it was a new product that didn't come through or a product that is discontinued, but they have extra packaging around and then they reuse it as something else. I have 100% 
no problems with the reuse of packaging. I think that it is very smart. I think it's eco-friendly. I think that it's great. I love the idea where I don't love it is when they take the exact same product, they put it in that packaging, and then they label it as something else. <laughs> that I don't like. I don't like that. That is not cool at all. Like for example, if I had, you know, this was my palette and it was called Nudie Patootie. And then I put a sticker over the top and I called it the Fruity Patootie. That would not, and it was the exact same thing inside. No, that would not be cool. And I sold it as something completely different, but it was the same thing. That's a very dramatic example, of course, but like for powders, foundations, things like that, where you might not be able to tell the difference if it's in, you know, labeled differently. Uh, you may not realize it until you actually try it and you think you're buying a new product, but you're not. Kind of like the Tarte foundation situation where they had the old foundation that was in the jar. They repackaged it and called it the Tarte hydrating foundation. Uh, it was the same ingredients in the same order. It's possible that there might have been a slightly different modifications, you know, even though the ingredient list is in the same order. It's possible that they had a little bit different of a formulation, but honestly, I seriously doubt it. <laughs> I really do. I would seriously doubt it. I would. So that's the thing that I don't mind, that I don't like, but what I don't mind is the reuse of packaging and trying to minimize waste. I think that's wonderful. Okay, let's see. Natalie, hi Jen, I love your videos. Do you know anything about the reformulation of Sunday Riley Good Jeans? I tried to order one yesterday on the website. It says it's being reformulated, so it's unavailable. No, I know nothing about that. Stephanie Nicole would be a great place to ask about that. I would imagine she she might know something maybe. I haven't talked to her in a while though. I haven't talked to her. I think I've talked to her once since she moved. So she's she's been going through a lot of stuff. So I think I said so about 100 million times. Uh, Margie, hi Jen. What do you think about the new Pat McGrath lip gloss? Will you be uh, trying and reviewing it? Maybe. I do like Pat McGrath products. I do find a lot of them to be very, very overpriced. Um, I, I, especially the older stuff, the stuff that had come out that was in really like cheap looking packaging, like those lip kits and the beginning eyeshadows and all that, they were really cheaply packaged. I mean, it was like, is this formula really worth spending that much, really? But now they're really beefing up the packaging. So at least it feels like it might be more worth it because you're paying for the packaging. But I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. It's definitely possible. Um... Jay Bernie says, what do you think of Jeffrey's video of Kathy Griffin? I didn't watch it. I did watch Kathy Griffin's mother react to it, though. I saw that Kathy Griffin's mother loved it, but I didn't watch that video. Stephanie says, hi, Jen. I found you from Emily's channel. She always stuck so highly of you. After watching you for the first time, I saw why wow, you're both really amazing women and have amazing channels. Thank you so much. Even having me and Emily in the same sentence, let alone in the same room, still makes me go, oh, my gosh, is this my life? <laughs> I mean, you know, think about who, you know, in your field, whatever you do for a living, thinking about the person that you look up to or somebody that you admire. And, you know, if there's anybody in, you know, your field that writes books or is on television or, you know, wherever and, and being able to be in that room and have a conversation and to be able to spend time with that person. I mean, it was incredible. It was incredible. Like I, I just, it was incredible. Monica, I have the Velvetizer powder. Never uh, used whatever the packaging used to be, but I like the powder. So, okay, Velvetizer was one of the things that was repackaged from the naked powder. They slapped a sticker on it that said Velvetizer. It is slightly different in formula than the original. Uh, if you watched What's Been Makeup last week, we did do a story on that where I did do a little bit of an ingredient comparison from, you know, looking at them myself. And there is a little bit of different. There's something called microsilica that's in the Velvetizer that's not in the other one, the naked. And then the naked has mica as a, or at least the lighter one has mica as a does contain where the velvetizer has a may contain, which it changes the finish of it where mica is going to give pigment color to it. The velvetizer has it as, as may contain, so it's not going to have as much pigment. So those are the big differences between the two. But I have heard great things about that product. Absolutely. Rebecca says, does anybody notice YouTube unsubscribing you from people you sub to? I noticed this week a handful of people I watch daily are gone from my subscription list. Yes, this is happening, Rebecca, and, but they're not unsubscribing you. What YouTube is doing is if you don't watch a channel 
regularly, they are removing that, that channel from your subscription feed. You're still subscribed, but they're not going to notify you of their videos anymore, which I think is ridiculous. I think you should be able to opt in and opt out to something like that. I think that's crazy. If I'm subscribed to somebody, there's a reason why I'm subscribed. It's because I want to see what videos they're putting out. And it makes me so upset. Like I just, ah, so, so yes, if you are, um, if you haven't been watching a channel for a while, or if you don't watch a lot of their content, if you put out a lot of content, like I put out a lot of content and you only watch maybe one video, you may not be notified of all my videos. And it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So, um, so yeah, that, that has been happening and that's been confirmed by some of like the YouTube guru people that are like YouTube certified that they're doing that. I think I even saw that on one of YouTube's YouTube channels. Uh, so Yeah. Makeup uh, breakup blog. Is it a 70 piece collection with JLo uh, and Inglot? Yes, it is. It's a 70 piece collection. But remember, 70 pieces means is like, let's say there's 10 lipsticks. That's 10 of the 70. So it's not like 70 individual things. It's, you know, a collection of shades of things. Oh, Carrie says, FYI, you're my first beauty subscription. I found Emily because of you. Oh, Carrie Jo. Thank you, Carrie Jo. Um, oh, thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Megan, for answering people's questions and, and all of that. I appreciate you all so much. Cheryl says, if I want to be notified, it passes me off if they can make that choice for me. Yeah, absolutely. It's messed up. Uh, Zem, favorite indie eyeshadows and lipsticks. Ooh, ooh, I got this one. I got this one. Okay, so favorite indie eyeshadows. Hold on. Favorite indie eyeshadows. I would say mm, Geek Chic Cosmetics. Nobody talks about them. They're amazing. They're loose pigments. They're super fab. Uh, who else do I really love? Honest, I have to tell you, I really do like the Laura Lee ones. <laughs> People like they don't believe me, and it's like they're really good. I'm telling you, they're really good. Uh, so I was really excited she came out with another palette. I've only tried on my eyes once that you'll see tomorrow, but I do like the Laura Lee ones. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think other ones I really like. Colored Rain eyeshadows are ridiculous. Juvia's Place, ridiculously amazing. I'm looking around because I need like clues from my collection of what I've been using for eyeshadows. As far as lips go, um. Ofra liquid lipsticks are my are one of my favorites. I can't say my favorite, but they're one of my favorites. Those are really, really good. I like the Ronnie Cosmetics lipsticks, the the Spark Dazzling lipsticks, the the stick ones. I like them better than the liquid form. Those are really, really nice. If you like a little bit of like glitter that's not obnoxious glitter, gives you a really nice shine. Those are the ones I can think of off the top of my head. I know there's more. There's plenty more. It's just those are the ones I'm thinking about. As far as I'm trying to think of other single eyeshadows that I really like. So there's a lot of single eyeshadow brands that I like. But those are probably my favorites. Just off the top of my head. Mimi says Sydney Grace are awesome shadows. I haven't ever tried Sydney Grace. Never. Michael says, you did your top five eyeshadow palettes with Stephanie and Nicole video. How has that changed at all from then to now? I'd have to look back and see what I had picked. I remember the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette was in there. I still really like that palette. I honestly haven't used it very much because I've been using other palettes to try out. Um, so I'm trying, I can't even remember what I put in there to be completely honest. I think I, I'm pretty sure I put Colored Rain and Juvia's Place. No, I know I put Colored Rain in there. I don't know if I put Juvia's Place, but Colored Rain definitely is still like, oh, they're so good. They're so good. I'm trying to think what else was in there. Can't remember. Stella says notoriously morbid. I only own their uh, one of their contour palettes. I don't own any of their shadow palettes. Oh wait, yes I do. Yes I do. It's very good. Yes I do. I've gotten a few requests. Missy K says review of a shop Miss A. That'd be cool. I actually have gotten quite a few requests for shop Miss A. I'm a little scared of the whole poop factor. To be if, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, <laughs> because a lot of very inexpensively made cosmetics. Uh, there's a reason why they're inexpensively made because they cut, they, they, it's possible, I don't know this for a fact, but it's possible that they cut corners in other places such as cleanliness and that freaks me out. So I don't, I'm, I'm nervous to do shop and say, I'm not trying to get an eye infection or my lips swell up, you know, it's just, that's not fun and my insurance isn't great. <laughs> I have insurance, but it's not fabulous. I don't want to go to the hospital. Callum says Essence makes amazing single shadows. You know, I don't know if I've tried a lot of Essence single shadows. I should, though. 
Oh, Michelle says, I've tried a good bit of shot miss A stuff and it's hit or miss. Thank you so much for that, Michelle. No eye infections or lip infections for you probably. <laughs> well, she wouldn't say that. Uh, Ann K, Ann, ah, you told me once how to say your name. Ann Key, Ann Key, I think. Please do a review of Shop Hush. I did. There is one on my channel. Yay, it already exists. I did a review of the, because everybody's mom's different, you know. Um, it just kind of depends on what your mom is into. You know what's really good if your mom likes peach scents? They have that Too Faced peach kit on their website, I think, or on Sephora. I'm not, hopefully it's still available, but it's got a bunch of things in there. And honestly, I really liked a lot of that stuff from that peach collection. I really did. I like the powder. I like the primer. Uh, I like the foundation. I think you get to pick your foundation shade. Uh, a lot of really good stuff in that kit. That might be a good one. Uh, as far as eyeshadows go, if they, I, I don't know why I'm on such a Too Faced kick right now. The chocolate gold palette from Too Faced was really, really punchy and good. And like, bam. As far as something more calm, I'm trying to think. Something more calm that somebody might like. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm sure there's like a million things, but off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. But I think it's so hard to recommend gifts, you know, when you don't know the person. It's really hard. Amy wants to know how the family travel van is going next vacation. Yes. If you do not know, uh, we bought a Sprinter van. And my husband has spent months decking it out with, uh, he built a bed in there. He put in uh, heat and electricity and all kinds of cool stuff. And I am just, it's, it's incredible. We took it for a test run and it went very well this summer. Uh, the content on the channel is going to be quite different this summer. I'm going to have a goal of one video per week this summer because we are going to be on the road from the end of June to the end of July. And I'll do an official, um, I'll do like an official announcement video on that and talking about that. I also hope to start like a vlog channel so I can keep up with you through like live streaming, maybe some vlogs here and there, but I don't know how that's going to go. I did try to do a vlog situation two summers ago when we did something similar and it was a disaster. It was so hard to do. And I ended up spending a lot of time away from my family because I was trying to keep up with YouTube and it just wasn't worth it. So, uh, you know, we'll see what happens this summer. But I'm going to try to do, my husband's even encouraging me. He really wants me to do, and I really want to do one video a week this summer. Uh, but What's Been Makeup is going to go on hiatus for two months because there's no way I can do it on the road. That includes the Makeup Minute. It's all going to pause uh, starting the end of June through the end of August. Uh, Callum, do you have any recommendations for super colorful palettes? I know that's not really your thing, but I find super colorful unusual shadows are hit and miss. You know what I got that's really good? I showed it in, my, well, not really. I don't know if it's really good yet or not. Uh, Suva Beauty, they have like a cake uh, palette. I, I think it's over there. That one's really bright and bold. Uh, and I, I enjoyed it the one time that I used it. Juvia's Place. Honestly, the Juvia's Place Mask Gray Palette, I can tell you tried and true. I know for a fact that thing is stinking amazing. It is incredible. And any of the Juvia's Place palettes, I feel like their formula is super consistent and super consistently good. Like, you know, some of those brands, they'll try, you know, a bunch of shadows and you'll really like them. And then there'll be a palette where you're like, what, what even happened here? Like how, what? You know, that never seems to happen with Juvia's Place. It's just consistently good. Uh, that would definitely be a recommendation. And of course, Colored Rain. But Juvia's Place, I feel like really nails it on those bright colors in that uh, that mask grade palette. And I think it's only like 25, 30 bucks, something like that. It's not super, super pricey. Uh, Kian wants a shout out. What's up, Kian? Natalie, I got confused. Oh, they already had Mother's Day in the UK. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, ours is coming up in May. Oh, Beck Winter is here. Excellent skincare channel. Just headed off to get some breakfast. Have an awesome night. Thank you, you too, Beck. Have a good breakfast. Uh, Dahlia says, do you recommend the Besame Cosmetics Adventure Single Eyeshadow Set for $37.50? I've never tried Besame eyeshadows. The only thing I've ever tried from Besame is their loose powder. It's like a setting powder that smells like vanilla, and it's amazing. But I've, I've never tried their single eyeshadows. I'm sorry. Karen says, Suva eyeliner solids are so good if you want a bright liner or face artwork activates with water. Thank you so much for that because I don't know about that. Uh, Joe says the Juvia's Place Magic Palette is great. Yes, it is. That's another really good one. Oh, Steph F says 35% uh, off on Juvia's Place now. Yay! Annie wants to know who would I collab with next. I'm not telling. I can't tell you because it's not as fun if I tell you ahead of time. Ruins the game. No spoilers allowed. I do have a uh, collab lined up though for the summer. And then I have an idea. I have my eye on somebody for the fall, but I haven't asked them yet. 
I had one that I had planned uh, for this month and it fell through. I actually, I, I ended up having to cancel it because I'm just get, getting out to Emily and all of that was just, it was so much. And I just, I just decided I just couldn't do it right now. But this summer, uh, while we're traveling, we're going to do a little collab action. It's going to be amazing. Andrea says, would you ever collaborate with a company or come up with your own palette makeup? Yes, both. But this is the thing about working with another company is they would have to understand that I am not putting out something with my name on it that is not something that I 100% believe in. Like they would have to be really patient with me. And coming up with my own makeup, I did start a process of coming out with my own product. It was just one product to start. And the lab that I was working with was not very cooperative. So I killed that project for now. Uh, and I am... I'm going to, uh, I want to go uh, switch labs at some point, but for now it's on hold just because I was really, you know, when you really get into something, you're really excited about something, you put a lot of time and energy into it. And then like it all fell through and I have to start over. So yeah. Yeah. I was really sad because that lab seemed super cool too. It was the United States, all natural, like super really into putting quality ingredients into their products. Like really really good lab and it just they it was just too difficult to work with them so it, she stopped responding to me at some point and i was like i this probably isn't a good match so i just let it go but yeah i would love to i have a, i have ideas in my head for a makeup brand that i've had for a couple of years and uh it's just so expensive it's so expensive but yeah, I would love to. And you know, I don't even care if people will be like, it's just another YouTuber want to make it. I don't care. <laughs> I would just do it because I want to do it. And because I am a, an individual person, I could do what I want with my money and my time. And people can not like it all they want. I don't care. Because it would be so fun. It would be so fun. And the ideas I have, I think, are really, really good. I do. Steph says, is this a secret thing that nobody thought of yet? Yes. Yes. And it wasn't an eyeshadow palette or anything like typical. It was something very, very, very unique. In my opinion, it was very unique. But, and the lab was all about it at first. And then the more we got into it, I didn't think they were the right lab. Let's see. What else we got going on? Oh, V is here. Hi, V from V Dreamcatcher. She says, I have so much fun making eyeshadow palettes with some of my favorite single shadows. Making an eyeshadow palette would just be a dream. I agree with you, V. And my friend Georgia from Georgia Harris does the same thing. And uh, and yeah, I mean, it's fun to just put colors together. Ah, there's so many things I wish I could just tell you. I don't want to waste all my idea. And there's trolls everywhere. There's always somebody trying to get in here and ruin my party. So I can't tell you. I would if I could, though. I would because it's a really good idea. <laughs> At least I think it is. Karen, I just bought the Tarte Tingle Toner. Great results overnight even really. You know, I don't know anything about a Tarte Tingle Toner. Somebody asked me the other day on Twitter if they re um, if they discontinued it. And I'm like, I don't even know what this product is. I never even heard of a Tarte Tingle Toner. I guess because I mostly uh, I mostly look at makeup. But Monica says, I splurged on the drunk elephant baby facial last month and I love it, sadly. LOL, my bank account didn't. Yeah, I am on, well, let me tell you what, what's happening with my drunk elephant stuff right now because it was not good. But I'm learning and that's why I'm not reviewing yet because I'm learning, I'm learning. Okay, so drunk elephant sent me a box full of stuff. They sent me the night serum, the day serum, the moisturizer, the eye cream, the baby facial, the lip balm. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God. I like, totally freaked out. I mean, it was like a moment. Like I was dancing in my living room because I've always wanted to try Junk Elephant, but it's so, so expensive. So I started off with a moisturizer. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ease myself into these products. And then I did Halo Beauty. So I stopped the Junk Elephant because I didn't want that interfering with the Halo. And I went back to my regular routine that I've been using. And then after I stopped the Halo, I just went just deep into it. I was going to say something just crude, but I can't do that. So, but yeah, I just went like, wait, I went all in. I used everything all at once. Used it all. I was using the day serum, the night serum, the baby facial, the, the eye cream, the moisturizer. I was using everything. Oh, my face did not like it. My face did not like it at all. I started getting wrinkles right here on my cheeks. I'm sorry, but I am not ready for wrinkles on my cheeks. Like actual like wrinkles. I, 
I, it was almost like it was sucking the life out of my skin. It was too much. I just did too much. So for the past few days, week-ish, almost a week, I went back to using as many hydrating products as I could. I used the Belief Aqua Bomb, and I swear that stuff saved my skin. Every night I've been using the Belief Aqua Bomb, and I really think that that is what is plumping my skin back up. And now I don't see those wrinkles on my cheeks anymore. So after my skin, I give my skin like a full week of recovery. I'm going to go in. I think I'm just going to use the C Firma, the Day Serum the moisturizer and the eye cream and just leave it at that for a little while and see how that goes. And I'm just gonna keep playing with different combinations because using all of them was a bad idea. <laughs> it was a really bad idea for me. So that's where I'm at in my drunk elephant journey. I really wanna use the baby facial because the baby facial seemed amazing, but I'm scared of overdoing it. And I think the C firma is gonna go bad first, so I wanna make sure I use that. And that is what's happening with drunk elephant that's my story and i'll stick into it but yeah the belief aqua bomb i swear that stuff just plumped everything right back up so good arwen says the sea firmer is good i wasn't a fan of their eye cream though oh good to know good to know i mean i it was almost like those like when you see a horror movie and you see the person like dehydrate that's like slowly dehydrate i was like in the early stages of that it was horrible uh, Mrs. Bungle 78 says, Jen, don't worry about the lab uh, could steal your idea or is there something in place to prevent that happening? Right now, there is nothing in, in place to prevent that from happening. They could totally steal my idea. I don't think they will uh, just because I got kind of a feel for the moral compass of the owner and she seemed she seemed like that would be something that would be against, uh, she seemed extremely moral, like as far as like her ingredients and everything. I can't see her doing it, but it's possible that she could. She totally could. There's nothing to protect me because I was an idiot. And I didn't go into it right. I was too excited. So yeah, she, she could totally rip off my idea at this point. <laughs> Beach, Baby Beauty says, I'm having anxiety over what's been makeup for two months. I know, I'm sorry. But it's really not going to be possible for me to do it on the road. Um, FBH 16 says, I see YouTuber skin routines where they use so many products. My skin doesn't react well to use a lot of products, but looks great. The less I use. Yeah. And I think it's also the combination because when you put on a toner and then you put on a serum and then you put on a moisturizer and then you put on an eye cream and then you do a face mask the next day. And then you, I mean, there's, it's like all of that stuff is mixing in your skin. So finding that right combination for you, I think is really important. Um, but yeah, I totally hear that. I totally hear that. Kitty, kitty of uh, pause. Did you look at the ingredients to see what could have potentially caused the wrinkles? Yes, I think that it was too much. Um, it was a combination of, I wish I had them in front of me, but it's the, the active ingredients. For some reason, my brain is like melting right now. And I can't think of, it's such an easy thing to remember. And I can't remember, but it's the active ingredient that's in the C Firma, the baby facial and the, uh, the night serum. I think it was just too much. Is it, is it retinol? Is it retinol? I think it might be retinol or retinoids. I want to say that because I know the baby facial is 25% and then the, um, C Firma and the night serum, I think have 15%. I think I'm saying it right. This is all from my memory. I wish I had in front of me. I hate not having it in front of me. AHA. Yes. Yes, there you go, AHA probably. Yes, exactly. Thank you guys so much for that, I appreciate it. Yeah, and Callum's saying the same thing, the BHA, AHA, yes, exactly, I think that's it. Too much, it's the acids. Thank you guys so much, see? Y'all know, y'all know, it's just, you know, sitting in front of people and like having to remember things on the spot. I think that's why some people just don't ever do live streaming because you say something, it's out there. There's no, you can't take it back. And if you forget something, if not, you, you everybody knows you forgot and you can't take it back. <laughs> uh, Marge says young wild and polished. Uh, Nicole swears that the drunk elephant eye serum ruined her under eyes. Oh, wow. Really? <gasps> oh my gosh. Mm. I'm sorry to hear that happened to her. Michelle says baby steps with the except with the H AHAs. Yeah, and I did not do that. I like went in hard, man. I went in full blown. No joke. Yeah, Steph says you can't use the baby facial with retinol. But but the thing was, I I I, had, I swear I asked 
the the person who had the PR company that had sent it to me, I asked them what I could do, like like how did you use the products? And I could have sworn they said use a baby facial one or two days a week, but it was not a good idea. Artsy Birdie says patent your product. I should. It's just all about the time to do it, and I need to. I need to. I need to figure all that stuff out. All that stuff is so complicated. It really is. And making sure you do everything right. It's a lot of work. It's a full-time job in that, you know. Oh, my gosh. Jennifer said Puffin's wife said the same thing about her drunk elephant eye cream. She got little bumps bad. Oh, no. Yeah. Arwen's talking about she'd rather get Botox and peels instead of the expensive skincare. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Hi, Summer. Summer says, and don't jump into using acid several times a week. Same with retinols. Yeah, and that's what I did. And I totally messed up. I totally messed up. Uh, Michelle wants to know if I like sugar pill. I haven't tried a lot of sugar pill. I, I tried some of their lashes. They were nice. That's it. Yeah, LA looks baby facial. Take that one slow. It's 25% acids. Yes. Five to eight minutes at first. Yes, that's what I did. I did five minutes. Yeah. Oh, no. You know what? I did do the 20 minutes. Yep, it said 20 minutes and I left it on for 20 minutes. I did. I sure did. And I should not have. But now my skin is, it's getting better. It's getting better. I don't see that texture anymore. I swear that belief aqua bomb is magical. That was, I mean, that's why I'm not reviewing it right now is because I'm, I have no business reviewing it right now. <laughs> yeah. Dahlia. Hi, Dahlia. She says, Jen, you're awesome. I'm sure you're going to be well rested and come back with so many good ideas and more amazing videos. I'll enjoy watching. I would like to think so. I hope so. I've got a lot of ideas for things. It's just having the time to do everything. Yeah, Ali looks in 20 minutes. Oh, no, I did. I did. And I, that's what messed me up. Tony says, you going cross country on your vacay? Yeah, on our vacation, we're actually going to uh, our first big stop. It's going to be in Colorado. We're going to visit Nancy, who's here. Uh, and we're going to visit Flory, who's one of our reporters. Uh, I don't think I've told her that, but we're visiting Flory. <laughs> I don't think I told her that officially, but I'm going to go find Flory. I'm going to stalk her down. I was supposed to see her two summers ago and it didn't work out. Um, but I want to find Flory because we're going to spend some more time there. And then I'm going to visit Nancy. And then we're going out to uh, Vancouver. And then we're going from Vancouver into Washington and California and Vegas and Phoenix and then heading back. So it's like big, like blue, 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 blue. Actually, I guess for you, it would be like blue, 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 because we're in Maryland. We're on the, not on the East Coast. Uh, we're in the Baltimore area. But yeah, it should be a lot of fun. I'm very, very excited. Very excited. I should surprise Flora, just show up. Like, knock, knock, knock. What's up, Flora? <laughs> She's been a What's of Makeup reporter for years. Yeah, there's so many people. Yeah. Oh, Christina's in Phoenix. What? Nice. Okay. Lauren says, Jen, uh, what's your favorite eye cream? I keep uh, feeling like you're ignoring me. I am not ignoring my promise. There are, there are hundreds of comments coming in. Hundreds of them. So I can only read so fast. So I'm not ignoring you. But I will tell you, the best eye cream that I have tried was the Origins Ginseng. That was the only eye cream I've ever tried that actually felt like it did something. But I'm not ignoring you. And anybody else thinks I'm ignoring you? I promise you. I promise you from the tippy tippy top of my head to the bottom of the tippy tippy of my toes, I'm not ignoring you. I just, I can't read everything. It's not possible. Michael lives, I'm in Baltimore. He's in DC. Yay. I grew up in the DC area. I grew up in Silver Spring, which is a suburb of DC. Uh, Michael says, I got my sister the ABH Modern Renaissance palette on your recommendation after Stephanie Nicole video for her birthday and she loves it. Oh, yay. Oh, I'm so glad. It is good. It's very easy to work with. Very easy to work with. Thank you for the well wishes, Sharon. Arwen got the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I've never tried that. I haven't tried anything by Tatcha. Nothing. Meryl's in the Dominican Republic. Oh, thank you so much. And Liz is in Dublin. Uh, one day. Bucket list, one day, I want to go to Dublin one day. That is a dream of mine. Um, no, so, so much about uh, different Korean brands, but never heard YouTubers talking about this thing's going to skip down. I'm not going to be able to read the rest. 
Oh, okay. But it's, it didn't skip down. Yay. But I've never heard YouTubers talking about a favorite brand. I used to have a Korean beauty series called What the K that I discontinued. Uh, there's a lot of information on Korean beauty brands in there. Uh, there that, that series was a little flawed in that it was supposed to be something fast, quick, easy. But I was only trying the products. It was very much a first impression series, which isn't my favorite. Um, and so, so everything is really based on first impressions. So... Um, but yeah, there still is some good information over there though on those. If you look look up what the K on my channel, you should find it. But yeah, lots of really good stuff from there, from, from K Beauty Brands. Sharon says, my, my mom had an office in Silver Spring when she was the big boss for a big company. Thanks for the shout out. Nice. Very cool. Lori says, what part of Colorado are you going to? I used to live in Colorado Springs. It's beautiful. I visited Colorado Springs once in my life uh, and it was amazing. Uh, we're going to Denver and Colorado Springs and I forget where else. Ah, uh, Bonnie's in Baltimore. Hey neighbor, what's up? Grew up near Silver Spring. Me too. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Ashley saying bye bye Ashley. We've got about five minutes left. Any other questions about anything? Oh, Shauna is here. My daughter's best friend will be studying abroad in Ireland this summer before they move on to their first apartment in the fall. Oh, that's so nice. I'm so jealous. Michael, uh, thank, thank God for the soft glam because I was not in the subculture of prism uh, from ABH. Yeah. And I didn't get the soft glam. And then I, people were saying that the soft glam looked like the nudie patootie. I was like, man, am I going to have to get the soft glam now so that I can <laughs> compare it to the nudie patootie? But I looked at it online and it doesn't seem to be similar really and truly. Gwyneth wants to know how my university experience was. It was interesting. I went to university as a 20 year old. I think I was, I was almost 21. When I went to college, I'm pretty sure. And so I was a little bit older when I started and I always lived off campus. So that was really different. Um, most of my social life was through waiting tables. I worked for Outback Steakhouse my whole college career. And, uh, and I lived as a server, man. We lived the server life. We went to bed at four. We woke up at 11. Um, we worked 12 hour shifts, uh, and we, we partied, man, we partied good with the, with the drinking at the bar till all hours of the night. Um, you know, it was, we definitely had some experiences, you know, skinny dipping in the pool, you know, like not me, but my friends, I was always on the outside fully clothed, but my friends, especially the, the guys, they were very much into skinny dipping in pools. It's very odd group of friends, but they were fun, but I didn't do it. I promise you, I did not do it. There is no... That was not me, but my friends did. Uh, but I did, I did rip my jeans going out of a pool because we, they, <laughs> they decided they weren't, they were going to break the law and go into a pool we weren't supposed to be in. It was like a friend's, um, a friend's apartment's pool, but he wasn't home. So like we knew like that, that, that pool, but we weren't really supposed to be there. So they had barbed wire over the top of the <laughs> fence. So in order to get in, you had to climb over the barbed wire. And I ripped a big hole in my jeans on the barbed wire getting in and out. That was a crazy night. <laughs> but I have lots of crazy stories like that from college, man. We were crazy. We did some crazy stuff. We had fun, though. I'm really, really glad we didn't have phones back then, like camera phones and internet stuff. Really happy because it was crazy. So Jenna says, been a bartender for 20 years. Yes, I was a bartender for about three months before I got kicked off. It's a little too chatty to be a bartender, a little too unfocused. <laughs> I was not a good bartender. I was very slow, but I was a good server. I was a really good server, but I was not a, not a good bartender. So, yeah. Yeah, I was. we had some crazy times in college. College was crazy, man. I hung out with some crazy people. We, were, we waited tables, man. We were nuts. We were nuts. We had, you know, the world was our oyster. It was fun. Uh, Michelle says, do you plan on wearing makeup this summer? Yes, I, I am going to be bringing a small amount of makeup with me. So yes, uh, but I won't have a lot to choose from. Emily, Jen, uh, did you do a March, April BoxyCharm review or unboxing yet? Looking forward to it. No, uh, it's coming this week. I haven't filmed it yet, but my monthly favorites I did film. I do have to film, a, well, probably on Tuesday, I'll probably film my BoxyCharm video for this Thursday. Aaron, I don't know if we're going through Alberta. I'm not sure. Steph says, I bartender at a strip club in college. Best money I ever made. I bet. I bet. Um. 
<laughs> Infinite Midnight, yes, to being in your 20s in college. Thank goodness for no film. Mm -hmm. Yep. Crazy stuff, man. Monica, I just, uh, my first I Rip My Jeans story was in second grade. <laughs> it was unfortunate. <laughs> uh, okay. Holly wants to know more information on the Physician's Formula Butter Palette. You know what I know. I know what you know. I didn't, everything I know is was in that, that uh, makeup minute. I don't know anything beyond that. Sorry. That's all I know about it. I don't own it. They, they smell like suntan lotion to me. That I can tell you. I don't like the scent of the butter bronzers that much. They're okay, but it's not my favorite. I know a lot of people love it. And that's why they made it into that little fragrance. Esther Lynn, I was crazy in college. Can't be anymore. I'm a middle school special ed teacher. Uh, you got to calm it down. Got to calm it down. Uh, Callum says, have you ever had any videos demonetized? I know a lot of small YouTubers struggle with that often. It used to be worse than it is now. I knock on wood. I haven't had a video demonetized in a really long time. So it's been, it's been a while. I have a whole video on it uh, from when it was really bad, closer to the beginning of the year. It was really, really bad. So, uh, but yeah, it's been really good for a while for me. I think they're more hitting, uh, I, like I know Phil DeFranco is still getting hit. I, a lot of the news channels and stuff are still getting hit a lot. I know Kendall Ray, uh, who does like true crime stuff. I know she still gets hit a lot, but the beauty videos, like I haven't, I haven't gotten hit in a while, but I was getting videos demonetized. Like every video was getting demonetized for a while like literally all of my videos, but then it would go under review process and like a day later it would come back. So, but yeah, it hasn't been bad lately at all. It's been fine. All right. It is one hour in. So uh, Leanna wanted to know what will make you get demonetized when they have a video that looks like it is breaking YouTube's terms of service. And I go really deep into it, into that video. Um, and that video is a much better resource than what I would be able to tell you now quickly. So Sarah says, are you still nervous about doing meetups? Yes. Yes, very much so. Very much so. I would love to do a more organized meetup, kind of like Taylor did. Uh, with Project Beauty Share, but I don't think I'm, I am I have the numbers for something like that yet. I think that once I have my numbers are bigger, then companies like Sephora, you know, other, you know, retailers might be more willing to have me have like more formal meetups. But I think at my numbers, I don't know if that would be enough for people to want to do something like that more formally. And I think that would be the only way I would feel comfortable with it. Instead of doing like the informal ones where I was like, hey, I'm going to be here, meet me here. And then Creeper, you know, breaks into my car and steals all my stuff, which is terrible because <laughs> that did happen. <laughs> it was awful. But I don't know if it was because of the meetup, but I have a feeling it might have been. But anyway, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pop off here. But thank you guys so much for being here. Hopefully this was still fun, even though it was kind of all over the place. I hope you still had fun and mad love to you. I hope you have a wonderful week. We'll have a more uh, organized theme for chat next week. And if you're new to the channel and you're not already subscribed, uh, thank you so much for being here. If you liked it, you can feel free to subscribe. If you didn't like it, then maybe I'll see you on the flip side, uh, maybe another video kind of run by at another time. Uh, and yeah, mad love to you guys. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for being here. Downloaded for 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. So have a good week. Mad love. Bye.